Preface of Part Two of The Age of Reason by Thomas Paine. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Age of Reason, Part the Second, being an investigation of true and fabulous theology, by Thomas Paine, London, printed and published by R. Carlyle, Fifty Five Fleet Street, eighteen nineteen. Preface. I have mentioned in the former part of the Age of Reason that it had long been my intention to publish my thoughts upon religion, but that I had originally reserved it to a later period in life, intending it to be the last work I should undertake. The circumstances, however, which existed in France in the latter end of the year 1793 determined me to delay it no longer. The just and humane principles of the revolution, which philosophy had first diffused, had been departed from. The idea, always dangerous to society, as it is derogatory to the Almighty, that priests should forgive sins, though it seemed to exist no longer, had blunted the feelings of humanity, and callously prepared men for the commission of all manner of crimes. The intolerant spirit of church persecutions had transferred itself into politics. The tribunal, styled revolutionary, supplied the place of an inquisition, and the guillotine and the stake outdid the fire and faggot of the church. I saw many of my most intimate friends destroyed, others daily carried to prison, and I had reason to believe and had also intimations given me that the same danger was approaching myself. Under these disadvantages I began the former part of the Age of Reason. I had, besides, neither Bible nor Testament to refer to, though I was writing against both, nor could I procure any notwithstanding which I have produced a work that no Bible believer though writing at his ease, and with a library of church books about him, can refute. Toward the latter end of December of that year, a motion was made and carried to exclude foreigners from the convention. There were but two in it, Anacarsis Clutes and myself, and I saw I was particularly pointed at by Bourdon de Loisy in his speech on that motion. Conceiving, after this, that I had but a few days of liberty, I sat down and brought the work to a close as speedily as possible, and I had not finished it more than six hours, in the state it has since appeared, before a guard came there about three in the morning, with an order signed by the two committees of public safety and surety general for putting me in arrestation as a foreigner and conveyed me to the prison of the luxembourg i contrived in my way there to call upon joel barlow and i put the manuscript of the work into his hands as more safe than in my possession in prison and not knowing what might be the fate in france either of the writer or the work i addressed it to the protection of the citizens of the united states it is with justice that i say that the guard who executed this order and the interpreter of the committee of general surety who accompanied them to examine my papers treated me not only with civility but with respect the keeper of the luxembourg benoit a man of a good heart showed to me every friendship in his power as did also all his family while he continued in that station he was removed from it, put into arrestation, and carried before the tribunal upon a malignant accusation, but acquitted. After I had been in the Luxembourg about three weeks, the Americans, then in Paris, went in a body to the convention to reclaim me as their countryman and friend, but were answered by the president, Vader who was also president of the committee of surety general, and had signed the order for my arrestation, that I was born in England. I heard no more after this, 
from any person out of the walls of the prison till the fall of the robe spear on the ninth of thermidor twenty seven july seventeen ninety four about two months before this event i was seized with a fever that in its progress had every symptom of becoming mortal and from the effects of which i am not recovered it was then that i remembered with renewed satisfaction and congratulated myself most sincerely on having written the former part of the age of reason i had then but little expectation of surviving and those about me had less i know therefore by experience the consensuous trial of my own principles i was then with three chamber comrades joseph van hul of bruges charles bastini and michael robbins of louvain the unceasing and anxious attention of these three friends to me by night and by day i remember with gratitude and mention with pleasure it happened that a physician dr graham and a surgeon mr bond part of the suite of general o'hara were then in the luxembourg i ask not myself whether it be convenient to them as men under the english government that i express to them my thanks but i should reproach myself if i did not and also to the physician of the luxembourg dr markowski i have some reason to believe because i cannot discover any other cause that this illness preserved me in existence among the papers of robespierre that were examined and reported upon to the convention by a committee of deputies is a note in the handwriting of robespierre in the following words demand that thomas paine be decreed of accusation for the interest of america as well as of france from what cause it was that the intention was not put in execution i know not and cannot inform myself and therefore i ascribe it to impossibility on account of that illness the convention to repair as much as lay in their power the injustice i had sustained invited me publicly and unanimously to return into the convention and which i accepted to show i could bear an injury without permitting it to injure my principles or my disposition it was not because right principles have been violated that they are to be abandoned i have seen since i have been at liberty several publications written some in america and some in england as answers to the former part of the age of reason if the authors of these can amuse themselves by doing so i shall not interrupt them they may write against the work and against me as much as they please they do me more service than they intend and i can have no objection that they write on they will find however by this second part without being written as an answer to them that they must return to their work and spin their cobweb over again the first is brushed away by accident they will now find that i have furnished myself with a bible and testament and i can say also that i have found them to be much worse books than i had conceived if i have erred in anything in the former part of the age of reason it has been by speaking better of some parts of those books than they deserved i observe that all my opponents resort more or less to what they call scripture evidence and bible authority to help them out they are so little masters of the subject as to confound a dispute about authenticity with a dispute about doctrines i will however put them right that if they should be disposed to write any more they may know how to begin october seventeen ninety five thomas paine end of preface